All right, a uh, very good evening to everyone to this webinar called Career Up, Be a Catalyst for Change, hosted and presented by Global Academia. Today, dear participants, we have two panelists member with Masrat Tawawala, who's co-founder for and director for Sundarji's Global Academia. And we have Dr. Smita Desai Ma'am, who's the founder director of Drishti. Both these women, the panelists, my dear participants, have been wonderful in the career of the special needs children, and they have been doing wonderful work throughout their life. And as we see, today we have joined together to give a webinar on career. Why? Because we believe that the career in special education needs needs some attention from all of us around the world. Hence, dear participants, let me welcome you once again to this webinar called Carrera, Be a Catalyst for the Change. To begin with the webinar, I would like to give some, uh, you know, some data statistics to all of you that give you a glimpse that what is the situation of this uh, special needs education in India. In India, the choice of education education is very very abnormal why because a lot um, a, a part of the society are not able to ensure that they are receiving good education especially the special needs education uh, which hasn't been seen so necessary in the early years but now with the rise of awareness people are looking forward for it in india there are almost around 27 million of people with special needs and in a population of around 1.4 billion. This means approximately 2 to 3 percent of our entire population has special needs. Of this 27 to 28 million of people, around 5 million of them are in the age group of 10 to 19. That means our young generation, almost around 5 million of them have special needs. And uh, age group of zero to six years which is a pre-primary age group which is much more than uh, you know uh, the overall thing and around two million children are part of this now if you can imagine two million is just the count that is possible uh, through the practitioners uh, view otherwise there are so many cases which have gone unnoticed According to census, around 61% of the children with special needs are attached to special needs school or any other kind of educational setup uh, in our country. And the situation is, my dear participants, much worse in a rural setup. In urban cities like Pune, Mahar uh, uh, Mumbai, Kolkata, Delhi, Bangalore, and Chennai, there are facilities available, but still we see a dearth of different kinds of specialist therapists, educators to become part of this journey. Dear participants, I would like to open this forum to our dear panelist, Mrs. Masra Tawawala, ma'am, founder director Sundarji's Global Academia, and Dr. Smita Desai, ma'am, a panelist from who's founder and director of Drishti to this world of opportunities. Welcome to the webinar, ma'am. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tanmoy. Yes. Now, to begin with, we would like to know, ma'am, what exactly are the special needs? Can you please acquaint our participants with the special needs? How do we exactly define special needs? Okay. Um, so there are two ways of looking at it. Um, you know, what we call special needs or in India, what's also known as CWSN, that is children with special needs. And uh, then there is also a term known as special education needs. So just let me distinguish and that itself will help define what it is. Uh, children with special needs are largely the one with disabilities, which are, you know, from moderate to severe and uh, children with special education needs. There's also a term uh, which is used in the UK, which is known as SEND, which is special education needs and disabilities. Um, now, the thing is that children in school may have difficulties with learning and might need some additional support and these children need not be having any disabilities okay so they can be children who've had a regular developmental trajectory and yet have special education needs that is they need some support in order to cope up with the learning in the regular school 
and then there are special needs which are actually the disabilities which you know are more severe and which may or may not be able to um, you know be supported in the regular school so that's the kind of uh, difficulty and also uh, if you really want to if everyone just wants to know about all the different disabilities um you know the persons with disabilities act 2016 uh, gives you all the 21 types of disabilities which are now recognized in india thank you so much ma'am for this wonderful introduction of uh, what exactly special needs and i am sure our dear participants have got an insight and were able to identify what exactly special needs and just to add to that ma'am has mentioned about that persons with the disability act so all of you can you know uh, procure this copy online it is available and have a look what are the different kinds of disabilities that have been identified by government of india now moving on to the next i would like to ask basrat tawawala ma'am what exactly and where exactly do we find the scope of spe special needs education so tanmay most important is that uh, special needs it's a very uh, absolutely a valuable career nowadays that you can pursue a career into special needs uh, you don't need to be a mainstream teacher to pursue a career into special needs but let me give you a word of caution it's a very different ball game altogether it's not like a mainstream school teacher so only if you have the passion compassion and you're willing to take up those challenges with special needs children then you should think of a career in special needs because as ms damam said the kind of disability that we are talking of learning disability we're talking about dyslexia dysgraphia this old uh, dysgraphia dyspraxia we're talking about cerebral palsy we're talking about autism we're talking about so many disabilities hearing impaired and so to take up a career into special needs is very very challenging and you should be prepared for it but i'll just brief you with all kinds of career that is open usually people think that oh it's only to be a special educator no but you have a scope of nearly 13 to 14 careers into special needs so i'll just start with the most simplest of all that is being a special educator now the special educator the scope that she has that is she can work in school she can work in hospitals private clinics and also set up her own a uh, center so the job profile would be you know like uh, for a special educator is that she would assess the skills of the children there would be an assessment done by her which is informal she's not qualified to do a formal assessment but an informal assessment to checklist she can make an iep she can actually plan organize an uh, entire educational plan for the child also she can work in close proximity with the parents the teachers the mainstream educators the management the counselors and she can also be a link into the classroom and link between all the staff and constantly plan a, a plan educational plan for the child so this is about the special educator now a degree in a special educator is a must for this kind of work next is a school counselor now a school counselor is more she is not exactly a special educator but she looks into the health mental emotional health of the child and she constantly counsels them mainly she is counseling the parents and also the behavioral issue of the child she works with special educators and cross proximity of the classroom for this you will need a degree in counseling you also uh, she provides with all the kind of services and therapy so that's one of the things a school counselor will do next you come to a clinical psychologist i go quickly through it again work in hospitals private clinics school but a difference between a school counselor and a special educator and a clinical psychologist would be that she would be looking into formal testing understanding the mental social emotional and psychological needs of the children she's more into data collection and she's more into forming reports which would help the special educator and the school counselor here you will need ma in clinical psychologist next one of the most important careers now we are looking at is of a developmental pediatrician or a behavioral pediatrician here this is both medical and the counseling side you need to have a medical degree into pediatrics and of course you are looking into counseling also the most important of 40 of a development pediatrician would be 
looking at the developmental delays and the behavioral problems of the kids. You also have a career now, upcoming career, into being an early intervention specialist. In this, you basically are looking at children from zero to six years, and you're addressing the developmental delays. You are you need to have a MA or a BA in special education, but your focus could be into early intervention. There is also a, a forte that you can look into now is speech and language pathologist. That is everything into speech related disorder that is screening, assessment, diagnosis, treatment, and management of speech disorders. Your uh, diploma into a language and special a speech uh, audiologist is a must. They call it MA into uh, Masters in Audiology, Speech and Language uh, Therapist. You also can do a postgraduate certificate course in auditory and verbal therapy to assist you in helping to become a speech audiologist. You also have a career in occupational therapist, which is absolutely relevant. Especially when you have to work with school children, you can work with NGOs, you can work in private clinics and in hospitals. Now here, you need uh, an occupational therapist would look into the ADL, motor, development delays and play skills of the children. Here again, a MA in occupational therapist it is a must. You also have a career to be made in physiotherapist that is looking into the physical aspect and physical intervention of it. You also have nowadays a career into a play therapist, looking into the behavior, emotional, and social issues. A play therapist is a must when we look at special needs children. You have new upcoming careers, which is not exactly linked to medical and academic, that is becoming a dance music therapist. Tanmoy, so you've made a career into dance music therapist, so you can tell us a little more later on. And of course, looking into a music therapist. Now, all these are allied services, and it is a must when we look at a school setting for children. So when we have an inclusive setup, we need a dance movement therapist, we need a music therapist, and of course, these uh, movement, dance movement, and music therapists can also have private practice. An upcoming field, again, which is very novel, but which is very useful, is animal-assisted therapist. So you have, you know, you train uh, yourself with animals to help children for their emotional problems to let out the steeds. You also have a behavioral therapist with a challenging behavior that we are looking at in autism and in other disabilities. A behavior therapist would really add sparkle to your uh, career. And you need to do applied behavioral analysts for this. A behavior therapist is very useful today in an organization. We are also looking at social workers to assist us. So an S, uh, MSW in social work is of great help. And another thing that we are looking at is being an interpreter, especially when you are dealing with uh, children with visually impaired. So you can interpret the braille language, the sign language. So there are many more careers that we are looking at now into special education. I hope I've been able to answer this question of yours. Thank you so much, Masrat, ma'am. Uh, I think it was a wide plethora of choices that you have laid in front of everybody. And I am sure everybody might have wondered that, uh, you know, they might not even have known that there's so much career option available in special needs education. This is one question which has come from uh, the one of our participants, say, oh, which asks, do we have to do a specific course to assist special children? If yes, what kind of course? So I would like to give this question to Smita, ma'am, that ma'am, if in case, for example, if we take a case of cerebral palsy, uh, what kind of different kind of career options are around the, you know, assisting a person with cerebral palsy? Smita, ma'am. Okay, so um, that's, that's a, um, it's a good question that has come in. And uh, one thing I just want to clarify for the participants is, that, um, you know, all these, um, you know, um, wonderful choices that Masrath has put forward. Uh, so these are all the different occupations which, um, you know, play their part in supporting students with um, special needs or special education needs. Okay. And um, 
special education needs really covers actually four areas special education needs covers communication so speech language and communication um it also covers cognition it covers uh, any kind of social emotional and behavior difficulties and it also covers the sensory and physical needs okay so can my if you are asking me about a child with cerebral palsy right now when it is a child with cerebral palsy um you know largely today the trend is that no matter what the disability or special education need uh we must try and include the children in the regular mainstream schools and that's what inclusive education is all about now if we were to include this child with cerebral palsy in a regular mainstream school then this child is definitely going to need teamwork okay so within the school itself of course it would be the teachers as well as the school counselor who are going to be the significant caretakers of the child all right and then there would be what we call specialists so the specialists would be one uh, for us for a child with cerebral palsy we might need a physiotherapist on board we would definitely need an occupational therapist so phys physiotherapist generally looks at the more gross motor functioning and children with cerebral palsy have a lot of those issues then you also would need occupational therapy because you have the fine motor issues as well as sensory integration attention issues all of that would be looked after by the occupational therapist most children with uh, cerebral palsy also may have speech issues so there might be speech and language stimulation that's required and that's where the speech and language therapist comes in right and then of course you have the special educator who would take care of the educational and academic needs within the classroom right so this is the team which is required whether the child is in a special needs setting or in the regular school setting um and of course i feel that um that the person who binds all of them together is the parent okay so you really need the parent who is going to lies on between all of these and see that his or her child um gets this kind of help that is required yeah uh, that was a wonderful uh, explanation uh, with the case ma'am and i'm sure our participants might have got a bright insight that you know how in each case now we have just taken a case of cerebral palsy like that there are different kinds of disabilities and i think there are different kind of comorbidities that happen within the, these uh, disabilities so the the nature of the careers uh, that is there in front of us are too many and uh, uh, if we want we can choose uh, uh, as per the you know the passion what we have and accordingly we can you know uh, pursue a career in a particular domain all right ma'am ma'am uh, the very next question that comes whenever it is specifically about careers is how much we are going to earn this is a very prime question which you know uh, struggles the mind of the young generation as well as people who are shifting from one career to another because of their passion so i would like to open this question to both of you and uh, you know uh, you know how the financial things looks uh, up to uh, when we want to pursue a career in a special needs education Right, so Masrat, maybe you can go, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so Masrat, ma'am, yeah. can go ahead first. So and basically, then uh, yeah. Right. So uh, it's quite a good career uh, if you look at the finances, but definitely it will not give you what you are looking in the IT world or a corporate world. You have to understand that none of the educational careers actually pay you what you would get into the corporate world. But there is another part to it altogether, which is very different. Everybody cannot go into the IT sector, so there are some people because of their affinity towards uh, special needs children or compassion would definitely would want to make a career here. And my dear friends, it's uh, you've got so many choices. And today, with the uh, kind of statistics uh, you told us, Tanmoy, it just shows uh, it just tells us that we are in great demand. These careers are in great demand and to tell you financially if you're starting as a special educator independently two three days a week 
you will earn somewhere around 15 to 16,000 just through three days a week for just giving about three four hours. Now, if you a full fledged special educator in a school, nothing somewhere between 20 to start off with, it goes up to 40, 45. If you have an independent private practice, like with, uh, you have a play, you are a play therapist or you are a DMT, definitely you are going to earn anywhere between a bracket of 30 to 45,000. And of course, you will be taking private sessions later on. And being a physiotherapist, you will be attached to the hospital. So you'll get a hospital practice. You'll have your own practice. And in a couple of days, you will be attaching yourself to an NGO or a school or a special needs setup and an early intervention setup. So it's not one place that you're working on. You'll be working into three different places. And I'm sure by the end of the day or the end of the month, you would be taking home somewhere about 60, 70,000. And uh, of course, later on, as you, this is, I'm, I'm talking about one or two years into it, but after one or two years into it, you could be definitely upgrading your skills and doing much more. You will be taking sessions. Uh, you will be assisting a whole lot of people. So there would be a lot of scope for you. Over to you, Smita. Okay. So, um, I would I would start up the same way that Masrat has, and I would say that um, you know um, honestly this is an occupation or a profession which you would get into because you have a high level of interest uh, passion for this. Um, so there is something that I do um, every now and then, probably at least once a month or so, and I ask myself, what else would I rather do? And obviously, I haven't found another answer, and which is why I've been in the field for the last 30 years. So uh, make very sure that this is what you want to do, because um, you know Masrat, of course, has given you some logistics. Because um, you know, once you are, once you take up something of your own volition, your own willingness, then whatever you earn, also, uh, you will make sure that um, it takes care of what your needs are. Yeah. So that's at least that's the philosophy I've used all through my life, and it has helped me in good stead. Um, having said that, what are some of the um, uh, you know kind of salary brackets we're looking at? Um, let's say in uh, schools, schools uh, might be paying you anything is starting I think about you know eighteen twenty thousand onwards, and uh, the senior management of course would get much more. Um, say, let's say in our organization, freshers come in and start off with, you know, 20,000 plus and soon move up. We try and fast track them as soon as they're gaining experience. Senior management is taking home, you know, a good salary of 50 to 60,000 plus. Um, so uh, it really depends uh, how many years you can put in. Um, international schools, of course, are paying excellently, uh, but then, you know, there aren't that many international schools. So really it depends also the also um, the different um, uh, environments that is if you're working at a practice based uh, environment like ours or are you working in a school or are you working in a hospital um, all of them give you different experiences so I think you should choose in terms of what experience you want to take up uh, we have, uh, we at Drishti of course offer absolutely full time jobs we don't take up part timers. Uh, we take up a nine to five, 10 to six, because we have a lot of things beyond practice that we're doing. We do a lot of outreach, okay? Because our vision is uh, to make a significant impact in the lives of these children and their families. So there's a lot of capacity building that we are doing for schools. So as a special educator, as a school counselor or a psychologist, you would also be involved in a lot of training work, which I think is the need of the hour. So these are the kind of salary brackets that you would uh, you would look at. But again, like um, you know, very rightly, Masrat said earlier, um, you need that passion and compassion. Um, otherwise, it's kind of better to stay away from it. Uh, because uh, what this job gives you, if you really like it, it gives you some intense satisfaction and, of course, frustrations along the way in any job. But this is something which is so socially satisfying that it probably uh, makes up for whatever little, um, you know, you might not be taking home as a take home salary. Yeah, 
um, I'm, I'm done. Uh, done my with that. Thank you so much, uh, uh, both of you, both of our panelists. Uh, there are many questions which are getting popped up in the question, uh, you know, chat box for uh, both of you, and uh, most of them are about various kinds of courses that one can pursue. Also, there is one question which specifically asks about RCI registration. So, uh, would you like to throw some light upon that about RCI and the registration uh, part? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so, if so, you talk about, yes, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Master. Go ahead. Uh, so, if you're talking about the courses, if you're talking about the courses in India, RCI, that is the Rehabilitation Council of India, is the statutory body which develops, standardizes, and regulates most of the things and the courses in special education. So, we have quite a good few courses in India. One is geared in special education, but all of them are full time. Two, this is a full time two years course, on site degree course, recognized by the RCI, and it has got an entrance exam. You also have a diploma in special education, recognized by the RCI, which is again you can you can use it for autism. You can train yourself for autism. Two years course, again affiliated to Action for Autism. Then there is also an integrated postgraduate diploma in special education. Now, this is slightly different for people who want to pursue it. It's got four, 540 hours of teacher's training and 200 hours of a child psychology. You have B.Ed. in special education in ASD, that is autism. You have B.Ed. in special education in MR specifically in uh, hearing impaired and learning difficulty. So your B Ed in special education again is specific to either autism or to learning difficulties or to hearing impaired. You have short term certificate course also in uh, autism spectrum disorder. You have a diploma course run by the RCI in for MR that is mentally challenged, cerebral palsy and also autism. So these are a few courses that are uh, you know, run by the RCI, which is a very important statutory body. Again, Tanmoy, there are a lot of private organizations running one year, two year courses affiliated sometimes to Mumbai University. Like we at Sundarji, along with Tilak Maharashtra Vidya Peet, also has one year in skill development in all kinds of disability. Again, that is a one year course and of course associated with Tilak Maharashtra Vidya Peet. So like that, there are a lot of organization, SNDT and uh, Mumbai University who will be having courses in special education. But most of this, that is a blanket rule that they, most of these courses are one year full time courses. Of course, there are online courses also available to you today after you've done your full year, two years course or an online course in case you want to upgrade your skills. And I think Smita runs a lot of online courses so she would be probably the best person to talk about it. Over to you, Skanda. Yeah. Thanks, Masra. Yeah. So, um, in fact, that's what I wanted to tell you that, you know, um, you could be doing these online courses while you're a student, while you're a teacher, or any of the other professionals that we just spoke about. So, in fact, Drishti has started an initiative called Prabhav, that is P-R-A-B-H-A-V, and our website specifically for online courses is prabhav.education.com. It's an initiative by Drishti for capacity building in the area of special education needs and psychology. So we really believe in inclusive education in psychology, and that's what we've been doing all these years. So if you get on to our website, there are various courses that we have on inclusive education, counseling skills, counseling skills for teachers. And in fact, we just put up a course there for which we're sending out information. And that is on crisis intervention and trauma management. So this is to get schools to be trauma prepared because today with the situation that we are going through in COVID-19, we've got to be prepared for what's coming our way in the next six months to one year. And there will be issues that we as school administrators, teachers, counselors, special educators are going to have to handle, you know, with reference to the children, the parents, as well as the teachers who are going to need help in the classroom. 
So um, you all could visit our website and we, we are constantly putting up more and more courses. So Masrath, uh, we are also soon going to put up a course yes. on, um, you know, um, leading, leading to learn. So helping leadership on different aspects, you know, on different right. psychological and psychosocial aspects. Okay. So we're putting up a course on that. Um, so guys, you can, you know, get on to our uh, website prabhav.education.com and um, you know there are courses there and the courses we do is in different versions so there is an insight version which is just a five hour course and you just get an insight into that particular topic and then you go into the next version which is a light version and that is just a 20 hour course so you can finish it in about two to three weeks and there that's a more in-depth version okay and all our versions have videos, readings. It has a lot of reflections which are involved in this. And then there is the advanced version. So that is if you want a certificate, then you have to do a short evaluation to be able to get the certificate. So that means, you know, you can go in without needing to be evaluated. People sometimes don't want to be evaluated. So you can go in without that and yet get your information. And if you want a certification, then that's what's also available to you. So you have different versions. Get onto the website, you'll get a lot of information about our online course. Thanks, Sanmay. Thank you so much, Mitha ma'am and uh, Masrat ma'am for giving us this insight on these. And many of the questions have been already answered with respect to courses. Many of our participants have asked that. And uh, if you see the participants, there are uh, you know numerous uh, career options that is available. And for a particular domain, you have a particular course available. So sky is not the limit. You can just go on and find out what you would like to do. And uh, you know you can. Uh, uh figure out what passion you know you have for in what kind of domain and accordingly you can choose a particular uh, career option for yourself okay now there is one question uh, uh smita ma'am i think we have lost uh a masrat ma'am uh in a bit i yes. think she'll join us back i think ma'am sure, has joined sure. us back yes. so there's yes. a there's a question which has come up that uh during this corona uh, you know entire lockdown situation all the schools have been closed and you know uh, there are uh, uh there was a different time when the children were coming down to school and uh, regular therapy regular education was happening to the uh, you know, special needs uh, children but uh, uh, what now how parents can tackle this and i'm sure uh, there could be a separate webinar all together on the same topic because so many parents are facing this so if you can just uh, touch upon this that you know what is the best tip that it, they can do at home so you know actually sorry can i go ahead no go ahead yes yes so Sanmay, what we uh, we have done because you know we uh, we are engaged in um, um, individual and group therapies at our center, anyways. And actually, since um, you know the last couple of years, we had been doing online therapy in terms of you know the remedial education as well as counseling for cases which were you know from either from out of Mumbai or from far away. So we had actually fortunately been trying this. Okay. And uh, therefore, we have been able to move in quite quickly into the online mode as far as online therapy is concerned, because we, we already had ourselves into that mode a while ago. And so for all our children who were coming to th for therapy to us, whether it's for counseling or remedial instruction, we have moved into the online mode. And in fact, we've had some very good testimonials from parents, you know, coming in that uh, it's working it's working really well yes the human connection is not there but we're trying to personalize it as much as possible and just like we say you know half a loaf is better than none um you know this is definitely there but you know there are some good parts to it and one is that there has been no absenteeism two great punctuality and three uh, the age group that we are reaching out to, whether it's the young ones or the adolescents, they just love technology. And so they're really enjoying this new experience. OK, uh, the little difficulties that we face is with students with autism, etc. But, you know, we've been getting some very heartening 
feedback from the parents of those children also that these were the kids who would not sit in one place right but somehow because it's screen time they're kind of enjoying it so we use videos we use puppets we use all those kind of things and well so far so good you know i mean a crisis also brings up opportunities it brings up a different way of thinking different mindsets so in all i think it's it's working out pretty well and i would encourage parents to reach out like we ourselves do a lot of parent counseling our counselors you know who are also attached to a number of schools we have kept ourselves open as a helpline for those schools and so we have a lot of parents as well as children and teachers calling us in so i think we i think we're all learning to adapt and making the most of the situation which is what is required all over right. to you master thank you you know tanmoy i would uh, i would like to add here the same thing we've done the special school suddenly was in a state of lockdown and so was the early intervention centers across all our branches so we quickly went into the online mode and uh, we had never done it but we had done videos for our teachers and all but we adapted and the staff was brilliant in adaptation and we saw that whatever we did online teaching it was like a regular school we for us and uh, we were doing activities we were doing games we were doing video conferencing chatting we in fact we also had a party for our special children on go to so entire man you know a party was organized a farewell party we did even the handover ceremony of uh, from one class to another the transition on the technology and go to and children were very happy in fact yesterday we had one more party of our early intervention center children and they are responding beautifully as smita said and even the sessions have become more and more meaningful we are trying the sitting tolerance we are trying and we are trying all the resources which a parent has at home because lockdown just gave us four hours but in four hours it was completely locked down so we are trying to use everything that is available on the teacher side and on the parent side and i think this has paved for a new kind of learning environment in the sense that tomorrow even if a kid comes from nasik and is not physically present with us there is a lot of scope of doing it considering that we give minimum screen time we are not online with the child for 2 hours definitely so we look at 40 minutes or 1 hour of session with a lot of sensory activity physical activity and i think a whole lot of things can go on the only thing is we need to take care of the bandwidth because the connectivity in certain places was not good and parent skills so maybe we we'll have to train up a parent to take up an online session along with the child and i think parents will become real time educators that's all that's a wonderful uh, story to hear from both of them from masrat ma'am and smita ma'am that even though in this these hard times of uncertain situation where we are facing the lockdown and we all are packed at home but this is also an opportunity to learn and adapt to technology and make best use of it and i'm sure with these stories in you would also like to you know explore what are the different possibilities that a parent can do apart from these sessions which is handled by the experts online yeah. and there is so, one more question no, i would has, like to yeah. yeah in fact i just want to add your parents would become the best teachers and they could become very good shadow teachers at times for other kids or you know we should uh, definitely have more parents joining us as special educators and uh, doing a proper course in it or even when we have these short term courses at our center and at prishti or at many other places a parent could equip themselves and could you know we are dozens of special educators i was just reading somewhere that we are short of 1 lakh 26000 teachers so what more than parents making career choices in special needs also um i just what like to add a word you were telling here, about the questions yeah i just like to add a word here though about the parents um i generally would encourage parents to take up different courses to educate themselves so that they are better educated in looking after their children they are better able to advocate for their children's needs yes however um it is 
it's really important that they remain parents and not become their child's teachers because it can be very stressful for the parent also. And therefore, I think the role of the parent must be that of a parent and also to supervise the educational and academic and therapeutic needs of the child. Therefore, I said, you know, like a parent is more like a traffic policeman and he's got to kind of keep track of everything happening because there's so much happening for these children that it has to be monitored. So parent education programs, which is also a lot of what we uh, we run, I sincerely tell parents that you must you must do everything to educate yourself as a parent, but uh, you know not not really be a teacher. I mean that's that's my opinion in so many years, and that's my experience, which is what I you know I just thought I'd share with you guys. Thank you so much for Thank sharing so much that, Smita, ma'am. Uh, now, if you see, dear participants, especially the ones who are parent, that you know it is not going to be an easy job to become a therapist. And even though if you try to become, you do your courses, try not to be two things at a time with your child. Either you can be the therapist or the teacher, or you can be the mother. And as ma'am said, it is always wonderful to keep, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you are a therapist or you are trying, you know, trying to pursue a course in therapy, it's better if you go and look after the other children first. Because what happens when you try to do that, the role confusion that you bring in will be more stressful to you as well as the parent, both of them. And with this, I think we are moving towards the end of the uh, webinar today. I would like uh, to uh, like to request Masrath ma'am to give her concluding remarks on about this whole webinar about career in uh, and how to become a catalyst for change. So Tanmoy, uh, one very important thing that uh, we need to touch upon is the topic of inclusion. See, we are looking at all careers in special education, online, offline, and physical world. And there are a lot of job, job opportunities uh, available to us. But we cannot forget that all these children who are uh, uh, with special needs need to be included in the mainstream of our society. There is no way forward but to practice inclusion. Inclusion right from the time when a child is diagnosed with special needs whether it's a kindergarten setup, it's a setup, it's a society setup, it's a community setup, it's a setup in your family. We need to include these children into our mainstream life. And unless we don't do that, there is we, we will not be able to have a very healthy society later on because the statistics that you are talking about are wide. And with so much of lifestyle changes, we see more and more children with at least. So my conclusion remark would be that I would like to see a very inclusive society where inclusive diversity and inclusion are practiced side by side. The first step to become empowered is to embrace disability. And the second step is to practice inclusion in all walks of life and definitely when more and more people take up careers into special education i'm sure we are looking at a more inclusive society because there's this new generation of millennials who will take up this career into inclusion and i hope that today our dream of making india an inclusive setup in all spheres would be achieved by many more people joining hands together that's all i would like to say and regarding the careers, I'm sure you've all understood by today's webinar that we have, there's no dearth of opportunities. If you want, if you have the compassion, if you have the feeling, if you are really, really inclined to what special needs, then, and that's your place of calling, please go ahead. Don't think about it. Thank you so much, Tanmay. Yeah, so Tanmay, my thoughts on inclusion are that. Um, you know, um, education is the pathway to growth and inclusive education ensures that every citizen of the world will be able to, you know, get this path ahead. Um, I don't think inclusive education is or should be a choice, right? Every individual must have the right to education. And that's what the Right to Education Act says. So I don't think 
anyone has the right to deny another individual the right to this normalized education okay and um, so i just want to kind of show this book um in fact uh, this is a book which i have edited and which a number of people across the country and across the world have contributed to it the name of the book is miss how and me it is everything about inclusive education it is actually a collection of stories okay from diff from the perspective of different stakeholders so we have stories coming in from school leaders from therapists from parents from our uh, higher education specialists and they've all put together a story about inclusive education and so what we try to put together in this book tanmay we try to put together a blueprint of inclusive education so success stories of inclusion we know it's difficult but we also know that it can happen right and so we put forward these success stories as blueprints and the name of the book is miss how and me which is actually the title of one of the stories and this book is available on amazon you can also get on to our website which is um, drishtionline.com and you would be able to have a look at uh, the book availability uh, it's available in ebook format also amazon will provide that so you can get on to any of this and the good part about uh, this book is that we have like 80 to 90% of the stories from our country itself which is not what we have a lot of we don't have much documentation right and these are stories which are coming from the stakeholders so it's a, it's it's a nice book it's a very easy read and um, a lot of these stories in fact can also be used as case studies okay so uh, just leaving you with that and with my thoughts on inclusion thank you tanmay thank you master thank you uh, i would like to thank, thank you Sita so much and uh, tanmay uh, for moderating and smita ma'am all across she's across seven seas today joining us and it was very nice uh, for you to accept the invitation from sundarjit and being a panelist here today Sure. Any any questions, Sanmoy? Do we have? Yes, ma'am. There was uh, one question, and which I think I would take up in the uh, my concluding remarks. Uh, we, this entire webinar, we have talked about passion, compassion, and even though we look at the lucrative uh, career that lies ahead uh, financially, also there will be a section of people who are not being able to afford all kinds of therapies. to answer that i would like to say there are other organization there are many organization even practitioners like who would like to provide the services for free or at least a minimum charge so what happens is the value of the therapy the value of the treatment remains there with us and there are uh, you know different kinds of program being run by all organizations in terms of not only training uh, the uh, you know people who are you know really uh, enthusiastic and but cannot afford the training also to the parents who are able to uh, you know uh, through the means of scholarship through the means of some kind of sponsorship to help them with the therapy section and i hope dear participants today's webinar about this career be a catalyst for change have been a fruitful one for all of you and i'm sure you must have taken away one uh, key point that if you have the passion in special needs education sky is definitely not the limit you have a plethora of opportunities with various kinds of uh, you know job prospects and some of them are definitely financially pr promising for you so dear participants uh, you can go ahead explore the possibilities and choose the career and become a catalyst for change thank you so much for everyone to joining us for this wonderful webinar on career be a catalyst for change presented by sundarji's global academia i have been the moderator we have uh, uh, we had uh, ma'am masrat tawawala from sundarji's global academia and we have dr smita desai ma'am from uh, uh, drishti who is the director and founder of drishti thank you so much thank you so much for joining in thank you thank you uh,